Okay. Thank you for joining us today. For those who don't know me, I'm Darlene McLennan, and I'm the manager of the Australian Disability Clearinghouse on Education and Training, ADSET for short. Today, this webinar is being live captioned. To activate those closed captions, please click on the CC button in the toolbar that is either located at the top or the bottom of your screen. We also have captions available via the browser, and we've just put a link into the chat box with, um, um, with that link. Um, before I begin, I would like to acknowledge that I'm coming to you from Lotchawida, Tasmania, Aboriginal land, sea and waterways. Now I want to acknowledge with deep respect the traditional custodians on the on, of custodians of this land, the Palawa people. I stand for a future that profoundly respects and acknowledges Aboriginal perspectives, culture, language and history, and a continued effort to fight for Aboriginal justice and rights, paving for the way for a strong future. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands on which we are all working or studying today, and to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are participating in this webinar. EdSet is delighted to bring you our second webinar for 2021. This webinar will be presented by Mary Wilcox from Claro Software. Mary is presenting today from the UK where it is 12 a.m. Um, Wednesday morning. So we thank Mary so much for staying up. Um, it's a huge ask, uh, yes. So, um, yes, and also joining us today is Jim Spiralis, who is from Spiralis Consulting. If you are a regular to AdSet um, webinars, you'll be quite familiar with Jim and his work as he's presented to us on a number of times. It's so great that you both can join us today. For those who are not... <laughs> For those who are not aware of um, Claro Read, it's a quick, simple um, and discreet piece of software that provides the user with text-to-speech for any readable text on their PC, Mac, Chromebook, tablet or phone. And today, Mary will be discussing how it can support learners with dyslexia and difficulties with reading and writing. Before we begin, just a few more housekeeping details. This webinar will be recorded and the recording will be available on AdSet in the coming days. If you have any technical difficulties, you can email us at admin at adset.edu.au. Mary and Jim will present for around 50 minutes and then we'll have some time for questions. I encourage you to please ask your questions um, into the Q&A pod. Uh, this is where I will take the questions and ask Mary and Jim at the end. We will also have the upvote button so you can upvote to get the questions up at the top of the list. If you want to chat among yourselves um, or um, even just put in what lands you are today, please add that to the chat box where everybody um, yeah, can join in the conversation. So just a reminder to please choose panellists and attendees so we can all read what's happening. Um, okay, so now I'm going to hand over to you, Jim, and you can introduce Mary further. Thank you both. <laughs> Thank you, Darlene, and welcome, everybody. It's nice to see so many familiar names. Um, yes, I thought I'd just have to spend 30 seconds to just clarify that uh, I have arrangements as a assistive technology consultant with a lot of companies, and Claro is now also included in that portfolio. Um, they've been around for a long time, and I've been very fond of the Claro products for that period of time. Um, later in the presentation, I will have an opportunity to explain my role with Claro here in Australia. But of course, as Darlene mentioned, um, the, the main uh, focus today is to welcome the wonderful Mary, who I had the pleasure of meeting some months ago, whose depth of knowledge is immense. And we really look forward to uh, your presentation, Mary. So Mary, I'll hand over to you and you can actually uh, give uh, some background about your, your experience and past and, and, and the presentation. Yes, thank you, Jim. Uh, Thanks everybody for joining me for this presentation. Um, I've managed to stay awake, which is a start. <laughs> it's a shame I couldn't be in Australia um, to do this demonstration, but um, this is this is just as good, maybe. <laughs> so I've been working with Claro for um, four and a half years now. And before that, I was a teacher and I taught for, for 19 years. Um, so I have an education background and I've always been interested in technology, so um, so the combination of the two, teaching people how to use the software 
and working with computers is just perfect for me. <laughs> So Claro Software has been around for, for about 20 years and it was founded by um, two British men, um, one person, uh, Professor Paul Blenkhorn, he is a professor of assistive technology, he knows lots and lots of all about how uh, computers can help people. And then Dave Stevens um, also founded the company. And he used to work for Dragon, who um, they, Nuance, makes the software Dragon. And Dragon is speech-to-text software. So um, it complements Claro very well, speech-to-text, text-to-speech together. Um, we were bought in 2018 by a Norwegian company called Lingit. And they, uh, they develop software that's very similar to Claro. It's all about reading text aloud and helping you with your reading and writing. So um, they're they're a great company to work for, and um, and we we work we help each other out um, with our software. And they recently bought another British company called um, Lexible, and their software helps with spelling and um, organizing organizing uh, and planning and things like that. So. Um, very exciting we're expanding very quickly <laughs> so uh, there's 22 of us at Claro and we uh, we all live in northwest of England not far from Manchester and um, we work when we can go to the office it's in Preston which is about a 45 minute drive from from Manchester and we all work together. Um, there's lots of developers developing the software further and further. And then there's um, a team uh, who do the marketing and sales and things like that. So um, let's talk about what we what we have to offer to help people with their reading and writing. So first of all, Clara Read, the software, um, will read any text, any text that's on the screen. In fact, actually, text that's not on the screen you can take a photograph of it and then have it read aloud as well so I will show you it in action just open the uh, here's a word document and here is the toolbar so this is the toolbar Claro Reed toolbar you don't have to have it floating on the screen like this you can dock it to the top of the screen so it sort of moves it out of the way, but it's gone onto my other screen. Oh dear. Let's move it back. I have two screens, you see. <laughs> so you can dock it to the top of the screen or have it floating or even minimize it and then just use function keys to have text read aloud to you. So it can be very discreet if you want it to be. And also you can change the size of the uh, toolbar. Um, hide hide the, the words, the captions underneath. And there are three styles as well to choose from. So you can customize it to just how you like it. So there are quite a few buttons along here, but we try and make the software really, really easy to use. So to have text read aloud, you can just click in the text where you'd like it to start reading from and press play. If you have difficulty reading and writing due to dyslexia, a visual impairment or using a second language, having to read pages of text can be really hard work. So as you can see, it's highlighting as it's being read uh, in yellow. Um, and it was using what we call the word trail highlighting option. So it keeps each word highlighted until it gets to the end of the sentence and then it starts again with the highlighting with a new sentence. And you can change all of that. You can have it highlighted just as you like it, whatever color you want and whatever style. And that's all in settings. This is also where you can choose a different voice. There are a hundred different voices uh, to choose from. We have two Australian voices, a male, um, Karen, and a male, a few, a male voice, um, Lee. So Karen and Lee. But we've also got English accents, Scottish, American, South African. Um, so lots to choose from. And then 30 languages too. Um, you, you just 
you get the more claro voices by selecting the bottom option um, in settings in the voice. Um, I have many voices on my laptop. We don't recommend you have lots because each voice uses a bit of memory. So maybe have uh, two or three uh, of your favorite voices there. You can also speed up the reading if you need it to be read a bit quicker or slow it down if maybe you're proofreading something. And then in advanced speech, that is where you choose when it will read and the highlighting. There's a box that you can tick that's called focus sentence and that grays out all the rest of the text so you can focus more easily on the words that are being read. So you can choose a word to be highlighted, one word at a time, word trail, sentence or a paragraph. And you simply select the color by clicking on background. Um, so you choose color that you like for the background when it's highlighting, when it's reading and the foreground is the text color and you can choose any color for that too. And then on the left hand side of advanced speech, you choose when it will read. So you can choose to have text read aloud as soon as you highlight it with your mouse and it will immediately read it back to you. You can choose to have everything. Uh, if you choose speak under mouse all, it will read absolutely anything that your mouse hovers over. That can be a bit annoying for, for some people, but if you have a visual impairment, it's very, very useful um, because you can have everything read to you. And you can also choose to have um, your own typing echoed back. I will, I'll demonstrate that. So I'm going to click OK with the settings and I will type a sentence. Um, it is Thursday today. So it echoes back as soon as I press full stop spacebar, it will read that sentence back. Why is that good? Well, you can check that you've not missed a word out, repeated a word or typed a word that you didn't mean to type. You can just double check it that it's right. So very handy if you're doing some work um, in Microsoft Word. It also works wherever you're typing. So if you were typing an email, for example, it would work there too. So I've talked about it reading only in Word. And I mentioned earlier, it will read absolutely any, um, any text. So I have, um, I've just opened a PDF document, which has lots of writing on. Um, I was talking earlier that you can select with your mouse. So I'll show you that. So you select text with your mouse. It will read just that to you straight away. The opening of a novel is important as strong. It will just read what you've selected with your mouse. If you choose to click play, it will read until you tell it to stop by clicking stop. So that's a, an accessible PDF. I could put my cursor in it and have it read. But how about if you've got an inaccessible PDF or you've scanned in a page? Uh, what do you do then? Well, it, it will also read that too. I'll show you how. So. I've got a scanned in page of a magazine. Let's open this. Now this page of a magazine has got a lot of very tiny writing. I think anybody would look at that and think, I really don't want to read that, try and read that. It's very, very tiny writing um, and squashed together a lot. So very difficult to read. And because it's a picture, I can't click on it's to have it read aloud. So if it was just a few words within a picture, you need reading aloud. You would click on the scan button, which is on the left hand side and choose the bottom option, the one right at the bottom, which says scan from screen. Your cursor changes into a, a cross and then you draw a box around the text you need reading to you. Dialogue. 
an intelligent device for automatic food intake monitoring and so it reads up to you one thing it doesn't do if you do that is um, highlight the words as it's being read but there is a way of having the highlighting um, it has put that text onto your clipboard so you can then paste it into word or notepad and then you can have it read with highlighting dialog an intelligent device for automatic food so so that's it reading um reading just a bit of text from a picture you can have the whole document what we call ocr'd and that makes it accessible it does involve quite a few clicks um but, but you, um, you soon get used to how, to how to do it. So you click on the scan button on the left-hand side of the toolbar and you choose a second option, scan from PDF. It will ask you which document would you like to, um, to have made accessible. Uh, mine's on my other screen. I'm just selecting it right now. And then... I'll bring it on here. It shows you because there's two columns on this um, in this document. There's two columns. It's showing you the order it's going to read, and then you have the option to add additional pages or delete pages from your PDF, and then you can send it to Word or or um, a PDF. I'll save it as a PDF document, and it will look exactly the same. But the difference will be that I will be able to have it read to me, which is most important. Health. So just saving it and you will open it now. The document looks just the same, but there's a cursor flashing now. So I know I will be able to select with my mouse or click play and it will read that to me. I log an intelligent device for automatic. So it reads the text in the PDF. It also reads text on the internet um, as well. You can use it in any browser in Edge, in Chrome, Firefox, um, and you can have the text read to you. We have a Chrome extension um, that is really useful if you have a Chromebook. Um, I, I was talking to Jim um, a couple of weeks ago, and he said that they're not used very much in Australia. Um, at the moment, but maybe in the future they will be. In Australia, in America, they are used quite quite a lot in schools. Um, I think it's because they're a bit cheaper, a bit cheaper, and not as prone to viruses as laptops. So, I've uh, I've shown you lots of uh, examples of it reading. I didn't change the voice though. Sorry. Um, if I have time, I'll uh, I'll show you a few more voices. So we've gone through this, re it reads with emails, Word documents, reads in your browser, reads PDFs, reads text in an image. So wherever there's text, it will read. So uh, I've just moved to the next slide and I've already talked all about all of this. It's uh, saying how there's lots of different voices. It will echo back your typing. Uh, you can change the speed, it will read uh, if your mouse hovers over it. Um, I've not talked about um, Dragon though. I mentioned it earlier when I was talking about Dave Stevens who founded Claro. But Dragon is a, an amazing piece of software um, that types for you. You talk, it will type and it's very, very good. Some people, some people hate it. A lot of people love it though. And we have a shortcut button on the toolbar called Dictate. And that means you don't have to open Dragon separately. It will um, it would just work by you clicking on the dictate button. Very handy. Less clicks is what we want to make things simple. Uh, so we have um, we have the dictate button. We also have a save button on the toolbar. Now this save button allows you to save an, a Word document or a PDF document as an audio document. Now, this is really useful for people who don't like having to sit in front of a computer looking at a screen for, for a long time. They can save it as an audio document and then go for a walk and listen to it being read to them or sit, sit 
on a sofa and um, and just listen to it. You don't have to be in front of a computer to have it read to you. You can also save a document as a video. Um, now, this is similar to karaoke. I think it's karaoke style. You choose a background color, you choose a font style and size, you choose the voice, the speed of the voice, and then it reads to you the document, but a few words at a time. So you're not overwhelmed with all the text. You can just see a few words, which helps some people. Let's move on. There are there's some help with spelling in Clara Read uh, because not everybody uses speech to text for their typing. Some people need a little bit of help with their spelling, uh, especially if they're dyslexic. So there is um, some help and I will show you the three buttons. I'll open Word and bring on the toolbar. So the three buttons to help with spelling is spell checker. Now you might think, but Microsoft Word is very good at helping with spelling. Our spell checker is really good. It's not so good if you can't read the words that they're suggesting though, is it? So let's say I've spelled, I've tried to spell work. I've spelled it W-E-R-K. And there's a red squiggly line, which means, oh, I've spelled it wrong. Now, if you right click on, on that word, it tells you, um, suggests some words, but like I said, if you're dyslexic, that's not really very useful. The spell checker in, Word, in Claro Read is very visual and it will, of course, read the text to you. So you don't have to spend ages trying to work out the word. You just hover over work, argue, wig. Um, it reads it to you. There's work. definitions. Activity directed toward making or doing something. And then there's a picture where possible to help you choose the correct word. So that's the spell checker. Close. And then we have a homophone checker. So homophones are words that sound the same, but there are multiple spellings for it. Like, like there, there and there, or C and C, or two and two and two. And it's very hard um, for dyslexic people and many, many non-dyslexics to choose the correct spelling. So the button, the homophone button helps you. So I've got the word to in the sentence. I like to eat strawberries, they're my favorite. If you click on the homophone button, it shows you the three spellings two, two, with pictures two, two. and definitions to help you find the correct one to use close and then the third button to help with spelling is the word prediction when you click word prediction a box will appear mm. i've chosen a yellow background you can choose the background color you you can customize it a lot in fact you can choose the font size how many words it suggests after how many letters um the the prediction style um, and also you can choose from some dictionaries. So if you're typing about um, film studies, you could choose the film studies dictionary and it will suggest those sort of words or biology or archaeology. And you will get uh, appropriate vocabulary for that topic that you're typing about. So as I type, it will suggest words with pictures where possible. And if you hover over them, track it reads them to you. Try. And if you want to use them, you click either the function key that is next to the word or you click with your mouse and it will put that into your typing. It does learn as it goes. So the more you use it, the more accurate it will be at suggesting the correct word. So that's word prediction. I shall switch word prediction off so that box is not on the screen anymore. So yes, I've talked about the spelling, word prediction. Ah, oh, there's a dictionary tool tip. If you have the option switched on, if you select a word, a box will appear with the definition. So you uh, can have that read to you and you know what the meaning of the word is. That's particularly useful for people who have English as a, as a second language, um, helps them know what, what each word is. 
Let's move on. Claro Read is can be used in exams. Well, it can be used in the UK. Uh, I'll need to check with Jim about in Australia. Uh, I think I think it is uh, approved in Australia too. It can be used in exams instead of having um, a reader, human reader, uh, there to read your questions. Why is that good? Well, it's a lot cheaper. You only have to buy it. Um, you have to buy it and put it on the computer, but you don't have to employ somebody and use somebody's time up to sit in the exam to help a student. Um, also, you can have many students in one room at a time because they can plug their headphones in and, and have it read to them and, and they can work independently. A lot of students like to be, um, be more independent and they might be a bit embarrassed if they need a question being asked few times they don't mind asking a computer to ask them to, to have it read like five times but they might be a bit embarrassed if they have to ask a person so uh, that's very useful um, and in the UK you can't have a human reader read an English language exam and but you can have a computer reader so that's another advantage too so it makes a student much more confident as well during an exam knowing that they won't have to struggle through trying to concentrate on reading each word they can concentrate what the question is and get on with answering it so um, that's why it's really great during exams i talked about this earlier um, you can make any document accessible so you can take a photograph or scan um, a piece of paper with some text in and make it accessible OCRing. I showed you earlier using the scan button. We also have auto converter. It's found in extras. I will show you. So in extras there are lots of different um, tools and one of them is auto converter. That is a simple way to OCR to make a document accessible all you have to do is when you first start using Claro you you create a folder on the desktop and then from then on you just put your document into that folder and it will automatically convert it into an accessible document so really quick and easy so if you do that a lot it's a really handy feature auto converter okay tinting the screen is really useful for some people it stops the words um, the text jumping around the page and also some people have Erlen syndrome and they really find it very hard to read text if it's got a white background. So we have two features that help with tinting the screen. One is called screen ruler, it's in extras. Now it's to the screen. I will. Uh, I'll put some text on the screen so it might be easier for you to see. So, so it tints the screen any color, whatever color helps you. You can have it tinted that color. And I've got a, a line, a black line, like a ruler going down, which helps to make sure that you read each line. You don't repeat a line or miss a line out. It really helps you follow the text. Just going to bring up the uh, menu. Hmm. You can change the thickness of the line, the color of the line, how opaque it is, and you can also choose whether it's shaded above or below the line and the color of the tinting. So absolutely any color you like. So I'm going to tint mine a little bit orange and alter how opaque it is. You can do the same thing, but using the ruler, which is like a window. So you can just, it blocks out a lot of the text and you can focus on one line at a time. They're just the same, you can alter the color, the color above and below and how opaque that is as well. And the size of the window as well. So if you don't want it so big, you can make it a little bit narrower. And that, that is uh, the ruler in screen ruler. You might've noticed though, when you tint the screen, the text does go a little bit grey. And so it's not maybe not so clear to read. We have Claro View, which is screen tinting 
just full screen, screen tinting. The difference is within Claro View, we have a button called True Black button. And because of the way the technology works, quite often people say they can't see any of the screen tinting. I'm not sure whether you can or can't. Um, but it tints the screen, but keeps the black, the text black, um, which makes it really much, much easier to read. Um, I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see the tinting or not. Um, but it is tinting. It's tinting on my screen uh, at the moment. It's tinting like a blue colour um, and and I can switch off the screen tinting. Some people don't want it totally black, the text. But a lot of people do find it is much, much easier to read if it's uh, using that true black uh, button. So that's screen tinting. Let's go back to the presentation. So tinting the screen, very handy for lots of people, makes reading much easier. OK, moving on to a few more tools we have available in the extras toolbar. So we help with reading and we help with writing. We also help people to organise their ideas and we also help them with uh, when they're researching and gathering information and organising all of that in preparation for a, an essay. We have a fantastic product called Claro Writing Helper. It's very new. It was released last year. And tomorrow, my colleague Stuart is going to be doing a demonstration all about that. Um, really brilliant, worth watching that is uh, Claro Writing Helper. Really helps with essay writing. But we have, um, we have Claro Capture. Now, Claro Capture is really, really handy when you're doing some research to write, write a, an essay, or you've got an assignment or a project and you need to go on lots of different documents and get some information and put it all together and then ready to, to structure your essay. Um, it automatically references everything and organises it. So I'll show you it in action. So I'll open it up. Uh, this is one I was doing earlier. <laughs> I'll start a new one. So you can see. So we'll clear it. You don't have to have it big. It, at the moment, it's using up quite a lot of screen space, but the, we have a mini bar button. If you click on that, it, it minimizes it to really small. It's gone on to my other screen. So where is it? So this is uh, the little mini bar, very small now, not using much space because you need to use that space for your research, don't you? So, so you can highlight text in Word. You use the highlighting tools in Word to highlight things. So maybe if you're, this is a big document and you want to highlight yellow bits for, you're going to put into your introduction maybe, uh, maybe green for, 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 for the research bit, um, and maybe red for the conclusions. And so you highlight the bits that you, uh, you want to highlight. Obviously, you wouldn't do this so quickly uh, in real life. This is just demonstration purposes. <laughs> and then when you've highlighted um, everything you want to highlight, you click on the word button in Claro Capture. And it puts all the yellows that you've highlighted together, all the blues or greens or purples, whatever you've highlighted, and it puts them all together and automatically references it for you and shows you when you um, when you captured it too. You can do the same thing in a PDF document by opening the document in Claro PDF, which you will find in Extras, so Claro PDF. Here we are. So this is Claro PDF. It reads PDFs um, and you can highlight in it and you can also type into a PDF. If that's something you need to do. You need to annotate onto it. Quite useful in lessons. If you've got a worksheet, um, you need the worksheet read to you 
and uh, you also want to type your answers onto it as well. So that's really handy. I actually use it for filling in forms sometimes. <laughs> so you highlight using the highlighting colours in Claro PDF, which are yellow and blue and green. So just like I was doing in Word, you do the same thing, but in PDF. And, um, and then when you've finished highlighting what you, what you need to highlight, you click on the PDF button this time, and it does the same. It puts all that highlighting into your Clara, your Clara Capture document. You can do the same um, without the highlighting. So if you just wanted to select some text, you can just select it Modeling and two on choose mark. the fourth option. And then it will just put that in with, without a little color to show what color you highlighted it because you didn't. Uh, highlight it. <laughs> so you can just put text in like that. You can also um, capture text that's in the screen, but you can't put your cursor on it. So if it was uh, in a title, uh, like uh, with a hyperlink, maybe you could select it using the scan from screen button. Muddling through on my. So if I choose my. Uh, my computer just froze then. <laughs> so you, you choose it, the cursor changes to a cross like we were using the scan from screen earlier. You draw a box around it and it will Muddling put those words into your document. And you can also capture parts of the screen too. So you could go uh, into onto the internet. Uh, BBC. So if, if there was something, a picture maybe, you can choose the, the second option in the menu and draw a box around what you'd like to capture, a picture maybe with some text, and it will put that into your document too. And then when you're happy with it all, you can rearrange all your captures so you can put them in the order you'd like, uh, you'd like them to be in. You can even add audio to um, to a capture by clicking on the little arrow next to the capture and then you click on audio note this is this is another tool that we offer in extras audio note it records audio and it can put it into word can put it into powerpoint as well or just a just a sound file so you can talk um talk into the computer and it will record your voice and then when you click stop the blue arrow has now changed to red to show there's a recording there and then you can export it so there's a tab at the top export you can export it to our mind mapping tool claro ideas powerpoint onto the clipboard rich text or word i think word is the most useful because it creates a table of contents headings and a bibliography it puts it all into your Word document ready for you to start writing your assignment. So very handy um, for when you've got to write something and you struggle with structuring it and remembering to reference it and everything. So it's now, I just want to move that out of the way. It's now all in a Word document. Um, with a bibliography at the end. So it's all you know, all the highlighting where I added an audio uh, recording. There's a little web file in, inserted into the document too. Hi, everybody. It looks like we've um, lost our connection. So I do apologize. Um, Jim, are you there? Yes, I'm here, darling. Yes. Yeah. Are, you that would, uh, <laughs> Are you good at tap dancing? Are you good at tap dancing? Yes, I can. And we'll keep an eye out okay. uh, for yeah, Mary. And hopefully back. she'll be back on board. Yeah. But I'll just uh, share my screen and pick up uh, from her slide. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And we'll so go much. from there. Yes. Um, so. Thanks, everybody, for your patience. Um, we've also got some questions there, Jim, too, if um, you're in a mm -hmm. position to answer those as well. So. Um, can people see the PowerPoint slide? Yep, we just we now. just probably need it to be put onto a full screen. Yes. Yep. OK, 
Okay, so I think this is where Mary was actually up to. Excellent. We've only got um, 15, 16, 17, 18, like 18 minutes to go as well, Jim. So yeah, That's correct, just, yes. Yep. Um, and I'm just looking at all the points on this slide, and I think Mary actually got to pretty much closer to the end because uh, uh, she showed us the references from your captures. Yep. Um, Claro PDF to extract some information and also the notes. And, of course, tomorrow Stuart is going to go into greater detail with Claro Writing Helper. Uh, the only thing that Mary perhaps hasn't shown is the mind mapping, but you can see a screenshot of the mind map on her slide and very much like with inspiration. Um, so all your Claro capture could have been imported into the mind mapping and from there you could have then added more nodes to the visual map um, afterwards and then of course uh, convert that to an outline view and export it to Word very much like you can with inspiration. Yep. So I think that would be fairly self-evident. Um, let me just see what the Great. next slide is. Okay, so we've got here, yes, um, so Mary did mention you can customise the toolbar at the beginning of her session and it can be quite discreet or just the core three or four uh, features that someone may use repetitively. So lots of, lots of uh, customised Customising is possible with the program. Um, Darlene, did you say we've got about 15 minutes? Yeah, so there's a couple of questions. Is, or is there any more slides, Jim? Uh, yes, uh, um, yeah. do you uh, throw just the Mac your, version. Do you want to throw your camera on too? Why are you? Oh, my apologies. Yeah, that's all right. My apologies. People would like to see you, I'm sure, if they can. <laughs> oh, except you get to see me in double. That's not good. Yes, okay. Oh, Mary's back. Oh, Mary's, Mary's back. back. <laughs> okay, shall we hand it up? Just I, I'll unmute stop Mary. Soon? We'll double check she's okay so to go sorry. first. So sorry. It's uh, my computer said it's encountered a problem. We are shutting down. <laughs> okay. So Jim, do you want to just stop sharing your screen because you're actually sharing the videos? Yes. Yep. Great. Yep. So I'll just cancel that. Um, <laughs> is it cancelled? Yes, it is. Thank you. All right. So <laughs> Mary, we've done some fast tap dancing here. Jim did very well. We've just kind very of gone good. gone through a couple of your slides. Yes. Um, with 15 minutes to go, we've got we've only got about two or three questions. So, is there anything you wanted to highlight before you wrap up? And did you want to bring the presentation back up? I don't think so. Um, I'm glad it happened then because yeah. I, I just <laughs> talked about most of it. <laughs> Let's. Uh, I just yeah we talked. I just. Uh... Yeah, I'll share my I'll share my screen and then yeah, I just just five minutes is that all right? Yep, yep, great. Okay. Thank you. So you should be able to see the uh, screen now. So we talked about the study tools. So there was Claro Capture. There is Claro Ideas, which there is a picture on this slide showing that. Um, uh, and then and that's Mind Map. We've got Mind Map. We've got Claro PDF. Audio note recording your audio. So lots of things to help with studying. You can customize toolbar, which I mentioned earlier. So you can choose what it looks like. Um, we have the same product, but for Mac books, it looks prettier like a lot of Mac things do. Uh, it does the same thing. It's got the same features. And it is available uh, Claro products are available on multiple platforms, so on your laptop, on your MacBook, on a Chromebook, also on your iOS app or uh, iOS iPad or your phone or Android too. So wherever, whatever you're using, you can have a bit of help with your reading, writing and studying. Uh, prices. So we offer either individual licenses, um, and individual licenses actually two activations. So you can put it on two machines or you could put it on a USB drive so that you can choose which machine you're using. Um, or uh, So you've got two activations there. So we've got ClaraRead SE, which I, um, I didn't talk about earlier. ClaraRead SE is used in exams because it doesn't have the spelling um, help. It doesn't actually have 
anything apart from reading text aloud. So it re will read text aloud and can be used in exams. And so it's very basic version. And so an individual license of that is $105. Um, we've got Clara Read Plus and Clara Read Pro. The difference between the two is Clara Read Pro has the auto converter, which um, is that easy way to convert an inaccessible document into an accessible document by just dropping it into the folder. That is that is the main difference between the two. Um, so they're the three different versions of Clara Read. So we do individual. You can have a school site license college site license or university site license. We um, we generally just go on whether you are a school, college or university. But if you are a particularly tiny school or a particularly large university, the prices might vary uh, a little. We also offer a home, school and go package, which is uh, which is just that you can have Clara Reed on your a student's home computer at home, but they can also have it at school and it's on every platform. It's everything that we do, you can have. And we also have um, a website reader too for, for your school, college or university. So anyone visiting your website can have the text read aloud to them. Uh, we do offer annual licenses as well as perpetual one-off payments um, for, for the site licenses too. And you can do a free trial, a 15 day free trial for individual. And we also offer a 30 day site license trial. So you can have a look at how it works within within a school or college or uni um, before you you decide to purchase it. And you can you can get a discount um, on on plus and pro um, just because you you uh, listen to me talk today. So you you need to talk to um to Jim about about all of that. If you contact Jim, he'll he'll help you out and put you in the right direction. So um, yes, the free free offerings. Uh, we have free licenses uh, for anybody. If you're an accessibility advisor, just contact Jim um, or me, and and we we can send you a free license so you can uh, you can use it and be confident at showing other people how to use it. Um, we off, also offer online CPD courses, and um, talked about the 15 day license trial and the 30 day license trial. Android apps are free. They're slightly cut down versions of the iOS apps, but they are. They are free and they are brilliant. I have run out of time to talk about them, but there is a YouTube video um, that I demonstrate the apps and they really are brilliant. I've been using them a lot with um, with my children during lockdown, um, mainly Claro PDF for having a PDF worksheet read aloud to, to them and then they can type and draw directly onto the PDF and tint the screen too. They're really brilliant. It's worth checking those out. And we have an EPUB reader too. So for any trials or support, just talk to Jim, contact Jim. His email is, um, is on the screen. Um, and uh, and that's, that's that about free op offerings. We are forever developing our software. And on our website, we have a roadmap to show you what we're developing at the moment. If you have any great ideas or suggestions, please let us know. Um, and there's help and support at Spectronics. So if you contact Spectronics, visit their website. Um, they also have phone support available too. And I mentioned earlier, we have a YouTube channel with loads of videos, maybe too many. Um, and you can uh, take a look at those for some more help. And thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Great recovery there, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> as cool as a cucumber. Well done. Yay. <laughs> thank you. Um, if it's okay, if you could share that link with us for those free iOS um, oh, yes. things, um, we can um, also put that so in on our website. When we put up the video, we'll add that to, to that website um, so that people can have easy access to that as well. Yes. Um, okay. So just a couple of questions that we've got from the audience, and I encourage people to please add their questions to the Q&A. Just going back to the pricing that you gave, is that an annual licence or is that a one-off licence? Sorry. With, with individual, it's one-off. Yeah, you buy it and then you, you can have it forever. Um, with school, college and university site licences, you, you've got the option of an annual licence um, 
or a perpetual. Those prices, the prices that are run the screen are the perpetual, the perpetual licenses. So one-off payments. Of course, you don't get the updates, but you, you do have a product that, that reads text to you and lots of other things. So, uh, so, and then if you decide you'd like to, to update it to, to the newest version with new features, then you can just contact, um, contact us or contact Jim or Spectronics and they can uh, sort out a price for upgrading if you Brilliant. didn't want to do an annual one. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. And just a question around the cap 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 compatibility. That's the word I was looking for. Not capability, yeah. cap compatibility with um, online systems like, so for exams within like the university and TAFE sector. Um, so we use Moodle and, and other platforms such as that. What's the capability like with Clarice? Clo it, it does vary. What, what I would suggest is download the free trial and have a go with it and see what it does because um because they're all slightly different and some work and some don't so um yeah i just have a go um because i'm not totally sure of all of the different platforms whether they work or don't okay yeah um yeah and there's a couple of questions that probably related more to what you're talking about at the time so we're just going back is someone's written i assume you still need a dragon license and i think that was early in the presentation when you were speaking about dragon so yes yes, yes. if you if you have a mac book um it uses you can use that link because you can't get dragon for uh, for a mac anymore and it uses the built-in speech to text so you can use that uh, to use the system built-in system speech to text and same with them um, with the chromebook but with a windows computer yes you have to have dragon on your computer excellent and, and there was can one... I just add to that oh, sorry yep, one more thing mary um just in the presentation on. sorry yes my apologies <laughs> That's okay. um with dragon mary and quickly mentioned there was that feature for dragon echo just to mention what that was about oh yes yes it if you use Dragon, um, you you would use it to have text written for you. But of course, you probably struggle with reading it. So you, you're not totally sure whether Dragon has heard you correctly. So there is a button in Claro so that it will read that text back to you that you've spoken just to make sure that it is correct. So that's the echo back feature. Yeah. And there was just a question in regards to cust customised vocabulary. I'm struggling with my vocabulary today. <laughs> I need another coffee. <laughs> hey, me too. <laughs> oh, um, cu customizing their vocabulary. Um, you can you can add common words um, to to the spell checker. Um, so if you keep making the same mistake, you can add that. And with word prediction, you you can add you can teach it new vocabulary you can scan in a document and it will take all those words and know that you're going to be using those words um when you're typing so it learns you can teach it <laughs> great excellent um just one last chance if people want to put a question up we're um just about to finish up just in thinking and reflecting around the cape um the um, compatibility, that's the word I'm looking for, the compatibility <laughs> with with our systems. Um, Jim, it might be worth, um, I don't know if we can have some kind of information on our website or whatever that if any universities or, or um, TAFE providers are using um, Clara software with those systems and what's working and what's not. So, you know, it's kind of saves time in people having to test it and so forth if we know that it is really compatible with Moodle and, and so forth. So we might do some future work around that to help people make a decision and know, you know, how it is working with our current systems within Australia. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, and look, and part of my role, just to finish up, um, Mary cut, Mary stole every bit of my thunder almost with a slide about my role with Claro. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so we do actually um, encourage university, if they want to trial it and have a group of students trial it, you know, my role is there to help build the capacity of the accessibility advisors to know the technology more and um, help get that trial set up. And I'm very happy to do an initial session with the students as a group to help them get started with their trial. So, yes, so please, if you want to, if you're considering that, take advantage of that offer. We're quite, we're here to help Brilliant. and to help you uh, conduct effective trials.
Excellent. There is just one more question in regards, but it's probably um, more okay, um, if, if, if you already have read and write gold, should you move to Clara Reader? Now it's a bit hard because as a Clara Reader seller, you go, oh, yes. But. <laughs> it's, well, it's your choice. It's personal <laughs> preference. It's similar, similar. We're very similar. People say that we have a better range of voices and we are. it's easier to use Clara Reed. But it is personal preference. Read and Write Gold is a great product too. Um, We are cheaper. That's one thing. (laughs) (laughs) Good sell there. (laughs) All right. To be be non-committal, we would say, no, some people prefer Coke and some people prefer Pepsi. Pepsi. Yes. (laughs) Yes. There we go. Well, thank you both for your time. Um, Just before people Mm -hmm. sign off, just encourage you, if you haven't already registered for tomorrow's um, session on the Claro um, Writing Helper, uh, looks, it's, yeah, it's going to be another brilliant session. So, and mm. and I think um, Mary and her her colleague Stuart for getting up in the morning as well <laughs> again, or, or stay, staying up. So mm. I'll Jim, go to bed soon. <laughs> very good. Jim, have you got a final word? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, in yep. terms of tomorrow's session, um, it, I'd encourage you, if you can, to, if your university does have uh, literacy support teams or study teams that support students, that it's well, well worth them if they can't attend tomorrow, uh, point them out to the recording afterwards because um, it is a. I haven't seen anything like it before in terms of supporting students with their with the writing process. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing it um, demonstrated tomorrow, and I'm sure everyone will, will be quite surprised at how very, very different it is to anything else on the market. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Look forward to seeing, um, uh, knowing that many of you will be online tomorrow. And I uh, hope you sleep well, Mary. Oh, thank you. Have a good <laughs> good time in the future. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Take care and thank you as well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.